Condonville Prison near Stirling houses all of Scotland's 400 women inmates, ranging from first offenders and prostitutes to murderers and drug dealers. I got caught. That was it. Ten year sentence, I couldn't believe it. Just because they're behind bars, though, doesn't mean the women are prepared to change their ways. Our main priority is drugs, you know. To me, it smells of a plan to bring drugs in. These girls are very, very fast and very, very quick. It's, it's in, down and away. They fucking never seen nothing, not a thing. Ah, you just make coffee. <laughs> with many of the women dealing with traumatic pasts and addictions, it's a huge task for the prison to deal with their behaviour. <laughs> Girls Behind Bars follows the lives of several of the women, showing the highs... I'm on top of the world. I'm going through this. ..and the lows of prison life. So just what you die. See you later, right? As well as their release stories... Yes! ..as they head back into their communities. I'm a bit lost. Stand here a bit lost, I don't know, today. Cornton Vale houses the prisoners in various units with progression to the most modern block only after you've proved yourself in the most basic sections of the jail. It's all right in here, I've got my bird, I've got to see my bird. Doesn't really bore me, eh? Been in the jail or not been in the jail. Prisoners who are waiting for trial are held in the remand block. They're more privileged and get more freedom than the mainstream population. <laughs> Staff are not surprised to see a regular inmate return. 34-year-old Teresa has been in and out of Conton Vale since she was 16 and is a well-known heroin addict. There's a very few lasses getting this block, but I, they'll give me a shout straight away since as they get a bit, obviously, because I'm, I'm good with everybody, man, I'll give you anybody. You know what I mean? I'm not going to do my drugs, so I expect it back, of course, you know what I mean? And they do get it back when the lasses get. For the prison, stopping the endless attempts by inmates to get drugs in is a constant battle. The drugs come in in various ways. This jail is very, very open, so the majority of drugs come in over the fence. And we're not talking small amounts, we're talking large amounts. It's picked up by a gardener, by a, a passwoman, and it's distributed around the jail. No matter what we do to stop them taking bringing drugs in, they will always find a way to bring them in. And I, I've never known a place like it, because it's so open. The, the drugs are, are everywhere. They usually just get them to the fence and that. And then it means I'm getting a lot more in, I'll get an ounce in a day or whatever. But I'm trying not to get in that road, don't I? An alternative method to get drugs in is to try to get a pass at a visit. But this carries far greater risk. Visitors face random searches on the way in. And all visits are carefully monitored by staff, who know every trick in the book. Everyone's got their own technique. Some people use their mouth, some people use their hands. Um, some people, it'll be a, a little brush past them. I've seen that many ways of passing drugs in a visit. You, you, you wouldn't believe it, honest to God. Teresa has been suffering from withdrawals for two days. So she's prepared to risk getting caught having a heroin handover during visits. I'll be angry if there's nothing there for me, but I am already spent a pass all the day but I'm automatically putting suspicion for it into because of my previous sentences. Teresa is currently awaiting High Court trial after getting caught with drugs in court and veil during her last sentence. And the consequences of getting caught during today's visit are massive. Across in the care unit, there's an emergency. One of the women is unconscious. Nineteen-year-old Zoe has tied a piece of plastic round her neck. Same. 
your life. Stick it to that. The staff are in time to save her life. Zoe is determined to end her life, often tying ligatures around her neck three or four times a day. She has been a prolific self-harmer for a while, but the past maybe two or three months, her ligature usage has been off the chart. It's been really, really bad. For about two demands, I'd probably say about, I've been involved in about 15, 16 times with Zoe having a ligature in her neck. So she's not playing at it. Keep the covers below the neck. Thank you. With many of the women determined to find ways of killing themselves, the staff are constantly on alert to try and save them. Zoe has suffered from years of sexual abuse and is reluctant to open up about it. See this? It's not a life and it's not an answer. And you're not getting anywhere with it. See if somebody's committed a crime against you. They need to be dealt with. Instead of use that here for petty wee offences because you can't get your head down in your bevy and you're giving yourself a life sentence. Mm. And just remember, these people are invincible. They always get caught out in the end. But we'll do what we can do for you, right? Mm. But you need to, you need to take responsibility. I won't. I'll be open. I won't that until, um... You need to, because see if you don't, you're just, it's just going to eat you up, Zoe. You can't keep it going. Mm. I don't know why to be the one to pick up the phone to your mum and dad and say Zoe's committed suicide, because that's what will happen. Aye? Mm. Listen, just hang in there. We'll do what we can, right, but you need to hang in there. Quite Never go to bed on an argument. <laughs> Good night. Because Zoe's so intent on killing herself, there'll be our officer at our door 24-7, basically, until we can get her some help. Until she gets in her head that she's going to take something forward and get some closure, then we're going to be having this for the rest of her sentence. And our next remand, because she will be back, unfortunately. Someone is caught during evening visits getting a pass. Luckily for Teresa, it wasn't her. I got something. I got my pencil. Sorry? I got my pencil. So I did. I had a wee bug get caught in the visit room getting hers. So I think that took the distraction away because they were actually quite on top of me then at the day. So that would do me because I've got a parcel coming in on Saturday. But the one that's coming on this Saturday is announced. Now's a kit, a bit of crack, when you go. So I'll have my good parcel on Saturday. And then every Saturday after that, and I'll get a parcel every Saturday after that. So it means I'll no need to do anything in the visit rooms again, thank fuck. Unfortunately, the majority of women who come into Quarantine Vale will be drug users. And they will generally be using uh, illicit drugs. And that will not stop just because they come into prison. There's a myth that prisons should do enough to stop drugs coming into prison, and that is just not uh, possible to do. As long as there are drugs in society, there will be drugs in prison. That's not to say we take that lightly, we do what we can to stop it. However, the fact is, almost all of the women who come in here will be addicted to something. They will do anything they can to get hold of those drugs because they need them. 96% of women in Cortonville have used heroin. Many suffer painful withdrawals on arrival. When I come in here, I had a big crack a bit and a smack a bit, so I was on both. We all go through that when we come in. It's what happens to you when you come in the jail. I suppose that's your punishment, isn't it? You're coming here and rattling. If we're on drugs, we tend to be chaotic in our lifestyle and our decision making. The prison offers drug awareness and addiction courses for the women that want to try and change. Lisa has signed up. 
Because Lisa is showing signs that she wants to deal with her addiction, she's been upgraded to the most privileged part of the prison. It's just like the travel lodge. It's not like a jail at all. I'm just trying to stay on here for the rest of my sentence. This is Lisa's first visit to a Scottish prison. When I was down at Medellin, I was working as a prostitute at the time, down at the Arbor, and um, I just ended up selling a bit of drugs and that. I wasn't really a big drug dealer. I had more rob punters, rob the money. That's mainly what I go to jail for. I just say I'm going to do business with him, take the trousers down and take the wallet. <laughs> I do it all the time. I've took cars, I've took everything off punters. That's what I've been doing since I was 18. But I'm trying to stay. I'm trying not to do it no more. Because a few of my friends have been killed from it. So I'm trying to keep away from it. Lisa believes she went off the rails when she was 11. After her dad committed suicide. I really miss my dad. If my dad was here, I wouldn't be in the jail. But because he died, he basically cracked me up because I was daddy's girl. And I knew he was going to do it. He told me he was going to do it. I went through a lot with my dad. So I really miss my dude. Being a heroin addict's just no life at all. Being raped and everything through prostitution, and that's all through drugs. If I wasn't on them drugs, I wouldn't have done that kind of thing. So that's what they do to you. Zoe is on 24-hour suicide watch. Because I just want to die. See, see when I cut myself, that's just a relief. But when I tie something in my neck, that's just when I want to die. It's just because what I'm going through. The first thing I do is just look and see her face. Because usually you can tell by the degree a blue to purple, how can I close a call it is. Because sometimes if the scissors are going to come in time, you can contemplate having to rip it off. Do you know how to do that? Aye, God aye. Or buy time until the scissors get there, we can uh, try to release a bit of pressure to get a bit of blood back into the, the person's brain. I was hoping that I would just tie it in my neck and that would be it. But of course it's still fine me and cut it off my neck, I just get aggressive and angry. It's just the way I feel. I'm to right, just stay myself in. As soon as I get a chance, I will. But I don't think I'll, I'll not have a chance for a few days now, so I'll be alright. Yeah. Zoe is convinced that she needs to take her own life. Her hall houses all the women that are suffering from mental illness, are serious and persistent self-harmers, or are suicidal. Some women will go to extreme lengths to cut and to harm themselves. It could be anything, it could be a strap of uh, pyjama bottoms, it could be they get curtains up and they use the tie backs of the curtains, they use the bin bags, it's basically anything they can get their hands on. It's amazing what you can come up with if you've got 24 hours a day to look for something. They can also come in with things banked, banked meaning that they secrete the stuff inside themselves. So they can come in with bits of metal, they can come in with blades, they can come in with glass, they can use a TV glass and smash it and bank it for later. So even if they catch them on one occasion, they've, they've always got something else for later. Cornton Vale has a reputation, certainly with the tabloid media, that it's a place where suicides happen on a regular basis, uh, where suicides are the fault of the people who work in the prison and I think this is a very very poor impression of what happens in Cornettonville. I'm very proud of what the staff do here. Lots of the women here want to harm themselves. Um, thankfully not many of them I think want to kill themselves. However sometimes self-harm episodes can obviously go to somebody dying. There are no drugs coming into the remand hall, 
and many of the women have painful withdrawals, known as rattling. Hi. Teresa and her roommate Debbie are suffering. I've not had any heroin for two days, so I'm feeling a bit rough. I'm supposed to have a visit with the way tomorrow, but <laughs> the drugs come, I'm sorry, that's terrible saying that. But I've cancelled the visit with the way. My main priority is drugs, you know. I know the Wayne's getting looked after, but the three Wayne's are so it's drugs in it. It's the number one. So you've got to look forward to in this child, really. Teresa has serious contacts on the outside and decides to try and arrange a drugs parcel. She phones all the people she knows that might be prepared to risk bringing drugs in at her visit tonight. I'll get a phone after seven then, right? Thanks very much, bye. She's waiting to go into the nursery then now. Her perseverance pays off as two contacts agree to the drop-off. Bye, bye. He's coming up to the visit tonight. Everything's supposedly, supposedly going all right, so no fingers crossed or anything, you know what I mean? Are you John? Yeah. Uh, he's coming in to see you, right. he's coming up to see me. Yes. Uh, he thought it was for 8 o'clock, I said, no, no 7, I know. Oh, I see you on the phone, he's going to make sure Bobby and Barry's picked up, that's it. Bobby Brown and Barry White, yeah. you know what I mean? I don't even mention their second names, that's my kit and my crack. Aye, well, they're coming up tonight anyway, oh, he's leaving okay. at 5 o'clock. They're leaving at 5? Aye, they're leaving I've got it sorted, mate. If everything goes all right tonight, touch wood, you know what I mean? I'm going to need to cancel the visit with my wain, can get to see my wain. In the most privileged part of the jail, Lisa has decided to go on methadone to control her heroin cravings when she's released in a month's time. I'm getting on my methadone any day now. And that's the only way I think I'll stay clean. What? Is being on meth. Plus I'll be smashed. <laughs> so, it's a cheap drug in the jail, isn't it? So... I just want to be on it to be out of my face, really, to tell you the truth. To be truthful right now, but the doctor can't know that. Can't wait. Apart from the methadone, Lisa also has something else to look forward to. First visit since I've been in the jail. I've been in the jail seven months and never had a visit. And it's just nice to get a visit with someone from outside, do you know what I mean? See, my Valentine's card I got today. <laughs> Lisa got the Valentine's card. Right, see you later. Right. No, I'm not going yet. I'm not going yet, baby. This is my palette's coming. See me, my Bedeen. I'm going to have a good visit. Because I've had a visit since I've been here. I'm going to have a nice visit. Mum. She's all excited. I'm quite happy for her because she's not really had a visit, so... I think it's about time that she spoke to somebody for the outside world and got a wee bit of normality back in her life because it has been a while. <laughs> and it'll just be good to can see her coming back, being chuffed, being happy about something that's a wee bit more normal to us because it is quite hard when you get into a different routine in here. So we'll just have to hope that things go well for her. Hope that she's happy. Lisa's visitor is a no-show. I don't want to sit down here, mate. Just my head in. What's that? I don't know. Obviously, my visitor hasn't turned up, but I don't give a fuck. It's not my boyfriend. It was just someone who was coming to visit me. So there you go. If it was my man that let me down, please believe me, I'd go nuts. I would kill him. I hate sitting down here. Do you see if it was my boyfriend or what? I'd go nuts. Because that's bad, Do you know, leaving someone sat here like a fucking idiot. As she lives in England, Lisa's not expecting another visit during her last month inside. In the remand hall, the girls are still rattling. And there's been bad news. 
The two cunts that were supposed to come up, they didn't get a hold of them to the last minute there. They said they needed to get organised. They couldn't come up the day, so I have to wake up for Monday. I was playing the big game. Big game game, your turn. Teresa, what? let's go. In an attempt to find relief from their withdrawals, the girls go to watch the evening queue for medicine in case they can persuade some of the other inmates to help them out. They go and watch for the candidates in it, see who's the usual suspects for getting it. Talk them in here, give me something. The girls are also on the lookout for new inmates who often come in banking drugs inside themselves. Sometimes, new inmates can be persuaded to share. Ben, you come in then. You're probably too easy. Last name again. They immediately spot a new girl who has a habit and reckon she's a potential saviour. With no drugs in the hall, this could be the best chance of success even though the new girl is adamant she's not holding back. Come on, not my mates, he's wearing... Wow, you just make coffee! Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking, mate, I'm joking. Yeah, take my ball, take my ball. <laughs> she was fucking right to her ball. She was lying under there this morning. And I thought she'd take a fat. But I'm like, that to every cunt, she's took a fat next to her. And then I've not seen her all day. And then it was just at the Met Eye the night I seen her. The eyes were pure pinned. I was like, she's fucking got man. So that's how we all got in a bit earlier. This is well, sort out the troops. She says, oh, it was yesterday I had it yesterday. She's holding, man. She's got it. Well, and we've gotten if she has. Got my cost in the back of the trailer. She's ready to go. Moi. Let's go. She's no shy, no she is. She'll be straight in there asking them. So I've got in and she'll get it. <laughs> You're right, babe. All right, the girls are convinced they've stumbled onto a gold mine, as long as they can maintain the pressure to share. <laughs> Their women's intuition eventually pays off. I know 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 I I'm on top of the world. Ah, oh, hey, what man? That will make my box. My hair's roots. I didn't know that shoot. Which is the beach we did every day. That's going down to the dozen. Really? Ah, hey, man. Got to watch for them now, man. Because they're all good at just firing them in there and pulling them into rooms. So just watch for them, man. Make sure she gets back to her own room. So that we're getting that one. You know, we'll protect her, we'll keep all the other, the rest of them back there. Not me. You go away. Come on, Mark. Come on, Bye. Bye. Chasing the dragon obviously is when you're chasing it on the foil. But you've got to do the chase to get the fucking cat in the first place to chase it in the foil, you know what I mean? Well, obviously, she's sitting with a lot more. So if she didn't put a bit in the wraps for each other, man, as would have just snatched out her own. It's jail life for you, innit? But she put a bit in the foil and then she put four wraps out. Gave us all a wrap each, you know what I mean? But we'll look after her, you know what I mean? Obviously we've got to put the pressure on for her to declare. But we'll get her things, no. But we'll look after her because you see the mess here. She's not get fucking toiletries or nothing, snout, all that shit. So we'll get her everything that she needs, you know what I mean? After several months in the remand hall, waiting for her murder trial, Carol Ann is writing her first letter to her teenage son. I'm charged with murder, and yes, unfortunately it did happen. But I didn't just go up to Billy and stab him. We were in a fight, and the third thing I grabbed for was a knife. It was self-defence, look. If I could turn back time, look, but I can't. Caroline is accused of murdering her partner. 
we were in the living room, he punched me. I got up to run in the kitchen and he pushed me against the wall and I turned round and he grabbed me by the throat. So he's flinging punches while he's holding me by the throat and I'm trying to block them. But I'm blind reaching at the same time. So the first time I got the kettle and I tried to hit him with it to get him off me, I missed him. And then it was a coffee, two coffee jars, one coffee jar first, missed the second one, tried again, missed. So the fourth thing I grabbed for was a knife and I've just went like that, I've stabbed him there. And I sliced the preliminary artery and that's the artery going to his heart. And that was him. Nothing I could have done to bring him back or save his life, nothing. I'm gutted, I must, I must admit I'm gutted. I'll just need to wait and see if I'm going to get the jail for it. Which, obviously there's a life gone, but it just wasn't meant. <laughs> Hearing reports of last night's drug activity in the remand hall, the prison have split up the main culprits by moving Debbie to another hall. I tried to say we were bullying me die last night. Bullshit, man. No, I mean, you made a carry on, made a joke, not that, you know what I mean? But obviously the screws heard it and put a complaint in against us, so the supervisor spoke to us this morning, said that, yeah, I'm here to stay, Debbie's away back earlier. Since she's trying to bully, She's just not a bully. She's not a bully. She asks people for things. She doesn't go up and intimidate them. She's fine. It's them. They're on top here. Every time she's in, they're on top here. It's a shame. So just lie down and die. Yeah. We'll survive. We're survivors. We're fighters. Debbie has now been separated from the other women and has no access to drugs. Hard work, hard work. Just lethargic, no energy. Just about lying about, so back. The beds don't help, do you know what I mean? The beds don't help. It's terrible, isn't it? You're fine for two days and then you're, you're rough for two days and you're fine and that's why you caught cheese in the habit, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Zoe has attacked one of the staff. She is furious that they're stopping her from taking her own life. The staff are left with no option other than to restrain her. Right, so we're going to bring you up to your knees, OK? So I want you in front of me. I just want you simply to bring your knees up to your chest and go no further, do you understand? Zoe's been quite a difficult person to manage. She's very young, she's very small, and when you see her, you think that she wouldn't have the, the ability to be quite so um, destructive as she is occasionally, mainly to herself, of course, but also sometimes to staff. And she has assaulted staff a number of times. Oh, you fucking kid! When Zoe loses her temper, she thinks nothing through. She goes for not to 60 in about one second, and there's no reasoning with her, there's no rationalising with her. She just goes for it, and that's it. But we know what Zoe's like. We know what's going to take place, so we start locking the block up. I gave you an instruction, I'm locking up, OK? It's important to get it under control, because if something's left to escalate, then the, the, the danger is that there's going to be a member of staff hurt, seriously hurt, or the prisoner's going to be seriously hurt. On my There are strict restraint guidelines which the staff have to follow. You're not there to inflict 
campaigned on a prisoner, but when we control a prisoner, if a prisoner is non-compliant, we will put as much pain as is necessary for them to comply. Yeah. The pressure will be removed when they comply to our instructions. So we're thinking about her safety even if she's not thinking about her safety. It takes over 20 minutes to restrain Zoe. Okay, she clearly has had a difficult background. Life is difficult for Zoe, whether she's in custody or not. And I suppose she's a good example of the type of young woman that should be diverted from a prison setting because I don't think that prison is doing Zoe any good at all. Almost every one of the 400 inmates in Cornton Vale has a serious addiction issue. And many use drugs to self-medicate following a history of abuse. I got abused when I was a young lassie, right up till I was 16. I never reported them to the police or anything. I was in care, in and out care all the days. I left Kelo Security Unit and came straight to Cottonville. So, and then I've just been in and out every year ever since. Drugs blanks everything out, doesn't it? But you've got to get money for your drugs, so then you start committing crime, you know what I mean? I just need to face up to my problems, really, you know what I mean? Start dealing with them as they come along, you know what I mean? And not putting them at the back of my head. And then maybe I will have the attitude to be out there and no want to use that again. But I think... I just need to sort out my head first. Lisa has started taking methadone, hoping to control her heroin cravings when she gets out. But the drug is having a big effect on her. I don't know what it is, what's wrong with me, Jules. I'm a bit depressed today. I've been a bit depressed for a couple of days now, so I have. I've been a little bit worried about about Lisa especially because she's just started on her methadone and she hasn't been well every afternoon and I've been concerned that maybe she's even over overdosing on the methadone. She's in a foul mood and every little thing and she's she's getting angry about little tiny things and I'm trying to protect her. Although she's a very strong character, I'm trying to protect her from the rest of the work party. Um, she thinks she's a, she can cope with it all but she's obviously having trouble but she's not prepared to admit it. Gloves. Uh, I've got some blue ones. No, I'm not wearing them fucking horrible things. No, Fuck that. Them, As you can see just then, she's not right. She's very, very irritable. Uh, I, might, I might send her back to the block. Sometimes it's just the best thing for the rest of the work by, otherwise they're going to be fighting in here and I don't want that. I'm not picking her rubbish up that by the way. Lisa, can you get the rubbish in the corner here? Oh, just the Lisa is arguing with two other inmates in the garden work party. Well, them two know how to gang up, that's all it is. But they can't gang up on me because I'm not scared and you know I'm not. And you are not meant to be smoking up here. Sorry, I'm just not well, Andy. No. Andy, I'm not well today and you know you I'm were not. You on report for smoking and now you're smoking. I'm sorry I forgot all about it. Lisa is skating on thin ice and may lose her job, her privileges, and be downgraded to the mainstream population. She's in an absolute foul temper over here and causing a lot of problems in the work party, so I just told her to go and take some time out. She's, ob yeah, she's obviously not right. To stop her fighting, Lisa is sent back to her cell. I had to come back to that fat slag. I'm not punching her in the fucking mouth. I, I am, so I am. Don't know she thinks she is. You're in a fucking stupid midden girlfriend. They're always fucking sitting there cussing this person, cussing that person. They're both middens, man. Both tramps. One of them's a fucking beast. That's been here for granny bashing grandmas before. You know what I mean? Like, Lisa's doing the right thing and walking away because she's, it's not worth taking a downgrade for. I ain't scared of none of them. I fight them both. That's why I've come back because he knows that. Andy knows that too, that's why exactly why I've come back. Fucking bams. In the remand hall, Carol Ann is about to have her first meeting with her QC. 
She's hoping that he will have good news about what to expect. I'm excited. Put it that way, I'm excited. But serious says to me, I can't go out and bail. I'm wanting bail and find out what's going to happen. I'll find out the night, hopefully. And if I'm going to go out on Tuesday. After spending years inside, Teresa knows things don't always go your way. I just feel as if she's setting her sights up for a big fucking heavy letdown. She's going to be pure gutted at the end of it, so she has, she's expecting to go out and bail, and it's not going to happen. She's saying she shouldn't have been here and all that. Of course she should, a life for a life. You know what I mean? Obviously circumstances and that. But she's still got to fucking do a bit of time for it, you know what I mean? She can't walk for a murder. I just don't want to do for here. No, I mean, I just don't think it's right for what I mean. I mean, it was self-defence, 100% self-defence. So I'll just need to wait and see. Fingers crossed. A week after starting her methadone course, Lisa has lost her job and has been put on governor's report for smoking in the health centre. One, two, three, seven, five, three. Okay, so I, three. Three. I look a bit rough cos I don't feel too good today. Smoking is only allowed in cells or during outside exercise time. I was in the health centre where I noticed there was a strong smell of cigarette smoke. I proceeded to the waiting area where I saw prisoner Lisa Marriott drop a lit cigarette to the floor and exhale smoke from her mouth. You didn't actually see the fag in my hand, Nicky. You seen the fag down on the floor between my legs. No, it was not. You never, honestly, the cigarette was not mine. I'm not lying. It wasn't my cigarette, honestly. It wasn't. It got thrown in between my legs on the floor. Honest to God, Nicky, I'm not lying. It was not my cigarette. The cigarette I was smoking in the yard was mine, but that wasn't my cigarette. You saw Lisa drop a lit cigarette to the floor and exhale smoke from her mouth. But it wasn't my cigarette. Honestly, it was not. Nicky's quite clear that she saw you but drop it wasn't a lit my... cigarette. Mm. In my view, I'm going to find you guilty of the charge of smoking in an area of the prison where you're not permitted to do so, OK? But I'm a bit concerned that, that I don't think there's any link between you being put on report and you losing your job. I tried my hardest to work, and I feel like he sacked me just because of that atmosphere, and I don't think that's fair. I'm but stuck in people's without a job, and I've, I've never had a day off work. You're always, you're always very pleasant, you're always... I am pleasant you know. stuff, I am. So what's gone wrong, then? <laughs> Just getting a bit too much for me now, Governor, because I don't see my family it's seven months now. And it's getting a bit too much for me. Lisa has been downgraded to the mainstream prison and has lost her job and privileges. The fourth block of that is blocked. Fuck. She's pissed off because I've been downgraded to two fucking slags, man. But never mind, I'm smashed off my mouth, so my face. I'm out of my head, so I am. Smash last night, I was. Off methadone, it's smashing me, it's making me out of my head. So... When you stop taking it? Huh? When you stop taking it? No, I like it. It'll keep me clean off the drugs so it will. It will. Lisa is still using methadone, and it is still having a big effect. Methadone is an opiate substitute, which is prescribed as a way of replacing heroin. Methadone can present several side effects, including drowsiness, itching, and it can also be highly addictive. There are over 120 women using methadone to control their heroin addiction in Cornton Vale. We can give them the tools to help them to give up. Obviously, we can give them things like methadone, which uh, will stabilise, hopefully stabilise their drug use and allow them to reduce that over time, although that can be a very long process. There are issues about, well, is that just not making them addicted to another drug instead of heroin? But clearly it's something that we promote, that it's better that we and the offender can control their drug use rather than just be chaotic and just about take anything that they can get their hands on. Lisa needs to get stable and used to the effects of the drug before she's released in three weeks' time. 
Carol Ann is back from seeing her QC. She's had her heat getting out the door and she's not getting it. She's got her heat out of the clouds. Six years now that. It isn't up to, but we bang. It's up to the judges. Lynette! Don't get near the new hen. She's greeting then. She's going to see a lawyer. I'll see her then. I knew that man, I fucking knew she was going to get gutted, be gutted, man. It's her first time in the jail and she thinks she knows everything and she knows fuck all, man. And I'm sick of telling her, stop building your hopes up, you're going to fucking come to earth with a big bang, man. And that's what's happened, isn't it? I'm going to go in and see her. Two minutes right, Alien. Carol Ann has been advised to expect a lengthy sentence. There's a new arrival in the young offenders. After months of counselling and new medication, Zoe has been moved from the care unit and taken off suicide watch. When I was at school, when I was about 13, everything just went completely wrong. I was drinking and taking drugs and that because I was sexually abused and raped. And then I just started um, drinking and that just to block it out. And then I started cutting because that was my helping. And then just started to tie something in my neck, but I've stopped all that now. Zoe seems to be settling in well. The counselling is giving her a new way of dealing with the memories of her abuse. If I do something to myself, be doing and worse than that, eh, that means that I've the other folk won, again, what happened to me in my past. Everyone thinks I'm doing really well in that, just coming up here and doing my time. Having spent most of her sentence in isolation, Zoe is now making good friends. I need to look after me, Zoe, because she's not very good. Nah, I keep her eye on her. She's the weest in here, so... She's fragile. It's like... I don't know, you don't know what to say anything in case she takes it wrong way. She's just... I like her, but she's a nice wee lassie. <laughs> it's good talking to folk my age, you know, everyone. Mm. Lisa is still on methadone, but with two weeks to go before she's released, her mood is lifting. I can't wait. Oh, I can't wait. I've lost weight as well. I have Getting healthy thin, because the methadone. But it's making me more livelier now, don't you think? More livelier on it, aren't I, than what I was before? Because before I was smash one out. Of course, you're working on that now as well. Aye. You'll not go to sleep all the time. She's also landed a new job as a cleaner. So, yeah, oh actually, my right? god, she can use it! Ah, <laughs> hardship fire, baby. No, didn't we, saw? <laughs> See, you can't use that. That was your fault. Lisa, you mad cunt. <laughs> Lisa's move to methadone to control her heroin addiction looks as if it's working. You see, when you get out, you just know that you get your methadone script every day, so you don't really have to chase the heroin, do you know what I mean? So it's quite all right, actually. It's a good, it is a good program in here, what they actually put you on. So, but I think I'll be all right on the methadone. I think I'll get through on it. Methadone is prescribed on a daily basis, so Lisa needs to find housing and decide where to base herself. Basically, when I get out, I start again. It's going to be hard for me, I'm not going to lie to you. It's really going to be hard. It's going to really be hurtful for me. Um, because I've got to start getting from fresh, do you know what I mean? And the rules I'm under as well. Plus I've got to stay drug free. So it's a lot on my, a lot to cope with, you know. And I just hope I don't break and start going back out to prostitution again. Because I don't want to do that, you know, because I was prostitution for I come in the prison. And I really don't want to go back out to that again, you know.
Carol Ann's trial is approaching and the severity of her situation is now beginning to register. I know what happened, it was me that done it, so obviously I've got to expect time. But what I've always said is, I don't want to be doing seven years or six years. I'll just need to wait and see. But I'm just worrying about walking out there and Billy's not there anymore. I'm saying that and it doesn't feel real with the new. But when I walk out the gate, he's just not going to be there. So that's the bit that I'm dreading. For Carol, I think it's, she's going to find it hard. She regrets it, not I mean, obviously, because it's her man, fuck's sake. She wishes it never happened, but the way she said it to me, it was either her or him. See, every partner she's had has been physical abuse towards her, and she's been the same towards him. She went to her sister's after she done it, asked her sister to help her. No, no, I mean, obviously, no way to get involved. Fuck, I don't know why to get involved in a murder. Fuck, been there and didn't so want to get involved. No, no, fuck, no, she ran away. She went to Aberdeen two weeks. Left him there? Aye. Mm -hmm. Yep. Even if anonymous so she'd phone for some emergency services that maybe I went for her, that she was just feared to hold her cell in. Mm -hmm. But running away from the crime scene, that's a few years itself. I know. She's going to be devastated when that fucking lord hammers her man. The isolation cells in the care unit are never empty for long. I'm gonna go to Zoe is back. After just three weeks, Zoe has been removed from the young offenders block for attacking a member of staff. I came to the door and she said, the next person that comes in here, I believe they were getting uh, either something thrown over them or, or hit with something. So the staff would have then went and kitted up, which means put on protective clothing. So a three-person team went in, got Zoe, put her in locks and removed her down to our management suite. Well, she's got the face of an angel, but she's got the temporary a devil. She's just... When Zoe gets an idea or, or something in her head, She'll take it to its kind of fullest conclusion. She'll know back down, even though she knows what she's doing is wrong. She'll know back down. What happened? Punch him. Go. Oh, what just happened first? Don't care. I got cut between here. Yeah. It really is a roller coaster with Zoe. I mean, I, I know it sounds twee, but uh, you, you get a period of behaviour out here, maybe a month or two months, and that, that's it. She'll always go back to square one. <laughs> Something went wrong and if you like she's gone back down the snake again, she's been up a ladder, she's back down the snake into Ross and she's needing that extra care again and it's really sad to see that happen. It's really difficult for us and certainly the staff in, in Ross in particular to try and move her on again. Despite making a huge amount of progress, Zoe still has a long way to go. Lisa is at the end of her nine months inside. She's out tomorrow and is anxious about leaving the security of Conton Vale and her friends. Pissed off, man. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm a bit worried about getting out because I'm going to miss Charlene so much. Here's a kiss and hug. <laughs> I'll mess you all off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is when I get annoyed and mad, I start writing, man. I'm very shaken up about getting out of her. I hope she gets out and goes straight and sees her mum, but I think she'll go to her boyfriend's back. But her mum's really no well, and I would really hope that she went to her mum's and seen her mum and her family. Instead, they got her boyfriends because her boyfriend has never really been in touch with her that before she gets it. After turning down a hostel, Lisa is heading for Wolverhampton with a lib grant of £62. 
they give him 62 pounds to live on. I think he's bang out of order, do you know what I mean? Uh, they give me forms and that to fill out for the social, but I don't think, you know, a couple of weeks that's going to take. Do you know what I mean? I'm not going to be able to live on 62 pounds. I'm never, I haven't even got no clothing, you know? The clothing I've got don't fit me. So basically, I've got nothing. That's the only bad thing about jail. They should help you when you come out. They should help you with, you see, you see you're getting out of the prison and you put a lot of weight on, you've got no clothing to go out to. You know, that's that's where more help in this prison you need. In the English jail, you get a lot more help than what you do in this jail. You see, we your clothing grants and that. This jail's pissed when it comes to that. They don't want to help you with fuck all. And I've got to get out of you with £62. I'm fucking pissed about that. I am. Lisa is heading back down a familiar road. Oh, come on, squat there and dip a bunny. Simple. Do what I'm fucking good at, dipping money. That's what I'm good at. I'll do it. So, well. Uh... Ah, fuck the system, man. Fuck it. It's the morning of Carol Ann's trial for culpable homicide. She's now forcing herself to expect the worst. I'm going to expect seven years, that's what I need to keep. Seven years. And if they give me anything less, they give me less, but I'll be expecting seven. So I will. It's not as bad in here as what people think. It's, it's livable to be here, but being away from the rains, my family, my sisters, it's not a good feeling. And of course, Bully's family, I'm thinking of them the day as well. So no, it's not a very good feeling. I'm worried, I mean, my stomach's going like a washing machine, but I can't predict what's going to happen. It's not dawned on me yet what's happened, so I own it at one point. In the hall, Teresa has been accused of getting a drugs pass during last night's visit. Officers are convinced that a pass took place after an old cellmate of Teresa's came to visit. Teresa is denying she was getting a pass. You to call it did nothing. No, I mean they fucking never seen nothing. Not a thing. The staff are sure they are right. Just before uh, they kiss each other, um, she's looked to her right. Okay, where member of staff has actually sat. She's then looked to her left, slightly forward, where member of staff sat as well. So she now knows where two staff are. She's then on a pre-arranged signal. They've got up to kiss. Now this particular girl is married with a child. So why is she having an open mouth kiss with a young girl inside a visit room? To me, it's, it smells of a plan to, to bring drugs in. At the end of the, uh, the, the uh, incident there, when she sat down, why did she open her mouth straight away? She's done it before, she knows the score. These girls are very, very fast and very, very quick. It's, it's in, down and away. I turned around and that. Just because I'm married doesn't mean to sit here that you can't have enough air, you know what I mean? And I shouldn't have opened my mouth, man. Basically, I stuck myself in me saying, they'll kiss whoever I want, basically, basically you know what I mean? And fucking... But they were waiting for her, you know what I mean? They knew that it was going to be happening. So, it's the main fault as well. We're looking for as well uh, when the actual visitor does this, because a lot of them can actually hold uh, a package in the back of their throat, look down inside, you see nothing at all, back of their throat, and they kind of force it up and bring the package up um, and then, then actually pass it. So I'm just waiting to see if I can see uh, a stretch of her neck as well to see if she's trying to get, to get it out, force it out. On this occasion, there's nothing in her hands. Uh, I can only come to the conclusion that it's actually in her mouth at this particular time. You've definitely seen a gulp going forward, definitely. There's a gulp there. There's a gulp there. You see it, it's like, it's like that. The staff have put Teresa on closed visits, which take place behind a sheet of glass, and which means she won't really be able to have contact with her youngest son. They went only come in himself to see me, man. He'll be so upset because he doesn't know me. They're supposed to be trying to bring families together, aren't they? Mm -hmm. They bond, you know what I mean? I can't bond with my wife. My doesn't know me. 
So he needs his granny or, or somebody there that knows him, you know what I mean? So that he'll start getting used to me. And you can't do that in a close visit, fuck's sake. No. But you do need visit rooms to get drugs in, man. Fuck's sake, there's a big fence. <laughs> <laughs> <Isn't> it, <man? laughs> I know. Fuck, it's crazy, man. Carol Ann is back from court. What's her name? Carol Ann Stewart. Do you understand what I'm doing? Court of the court. Yes. Do they have any in your pockets? No. Just want to see that. Thank you. She was right to expect the worst. Oh, God. It was just a horrible, horrible day. Horrible day. His family was in the court and his uh, family drew a letter into the judge. So they had seen how much they were still missing them, so I had to sit and listen to that as well. But it's a shame for them, it is. A sad day for everybody. It just hits home what you're actually here for. Because mm -hmm. it's easy, no easy, but it's easier in here to forget what you're in for. Yeah. Till you come up to the court case and then you go... It's like a big, that's when it hits you, I think. It's definitely helped me the day, I can feel it the day. Carol Ann has been sentenced to six and a half years. Next time on Girls Behind Bars. Teresa faces being sentenced for seven years at her trial. It's harsh, very harsh. But for fending a rain drug habit, really. I'm not got it. Debbie decides to turn over a new leaf. I'm straight and it's brilliant and I love it. As soon as a bit of kit comes her way, she'll take it. Please believe me. I'm old, Debbie, fuck. And two of the young offenders are released back into their communities. She looked right into my face and done that. Slash there. And I just done that. And slashed me. She's done. But do you want a fucking game? They say, oh, well, I've got really good stuff, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And it's just making sure that you can say no then. Because if I take it that once, I'll go back to it. This time I'll lose all my family and everything. I'll not have nobody.